All right, so folks, in this video, we're going to talk about how we go about classifying fingerprints as uh, arches. We know uh, our three primary fingerprint patterns are arches, loops, and whorls. And we've discussed in earlier videos that uh, why 60 to 65% of fingerprints are loops and 30 to 35% are whorls, uh, only uh, less than 5% or around 5% of fingerprints are classified as arches. And what we'll talk about in this video is uh, what makes a fingerprint an arch and also how do we determine what type of arch we have because just like with loops where we have ulnar and radial loops with arches we have two different types of arches we have plain arches and then we have what are called tented arches and we've mentioned mentioned tented arches in an earlier video in terms of distribution or frequency um, of the two types of arches, the more common is the plain arch. Um, about 60% of arches are considered plain arches, while about, while about uh, only 40% of arches are tented arches. So in terms of uh, fingerprint patterns, the least common of all fingerprints is going to be the tented arch. When you consider that less than 5% of fingerprints are arches, and only about 40% of that 5% are tented arches, you can see that the tented arches uh, make up the, the smallest portion of all fingerprints, so they're the least common. We're going to start off by talking about the plain arch first. Now, arches, in general, the, the definition or explanation of an arch is any fingerprint pattern where the ridges tend to flow in from one side, rise up in the middle, and then flow out the opposite side. So they're, they're fingerprints that are lacking any sort of recurving ridges or circuit patterns. Um, and plain arches, uh, arches in general typically do not have uh, deltas either. So we're not looking for type lines or divergences that would that would uh, develop into deltas. Here we see an example of what is a plain arch. Uh, a plain arch primarily is differentiated from a tented arch in terms of the steepness of the rise in the middle of the arch. Plain arches, and this is a good example of a plain arch, you can see that as the ridges rise in the middle, it's more of a gentle rise, more like a, a hill rather than a, a sharp peak like you'd have in the mountains. Here are three good examples of plain arches. Uh, when we do classify arches, um, if it's a plain arch, then underneath the fingerprint, we're going to write uh, the letter A. If it's in the index finger, we're going to write a capital A. Any other finger, if it's a plain arch, we're going to write a lowercase a. And in the top right-hand corner, because we don't have a, a ridge count, we don't have a tracing with an arch, if it's a plain arch, in the top right-hand corner of the fingerprint box, we're going to put two capital A's. Uh, if it's a tented arch, we're going to put two capital T's. Now, in terms of definitions of plain arches, our, our, our patterns in which the rid ridges enter upon one side make a rise or a wave in the center, and flow or tend to flow out upon the opposite side. So here are three good examples of what would be considered tented arch, or rather plain arches. Again, we see that the ridges flow in from one side, they rise up, they flow out the other side. Now, plain arches are very easy to pick out um, because we're, we don't see any sort of recurves, we don't see any uh, circuits, we don't see any deltas. Uh, later on, when we talk about comparisons, we'll find out though that arches are some of the more typical or some of the more difficult fingerprints to compare because they start to lack some of the features we need to do a good comparison. But this is an example, or these are examples of plain arches, very good examples of them. Um, as we mentioned, plain arches are ones in which uh, we see that the ridges flowing from one side rise up or form a wave pattern and then flow out the other side. And so here are examples of what ha might happen to the ridges uh, in, in any number of plain arches. Um, one of the ones I want to bring to your attention is number four. Uh, in the description of an arch, it does say that sometimes the ridges can form a wave sort of pattern. These aren't really a typical recurve. This is more of a wave formation. And so number four is still an example of a plain arch. And so I wanted you to be able to see that. So these are examples of what the ridges can do uh, in a fingerprint to still be considered uh, plain arches. So here's a plain arch. Uh, you can see that the ridges flow in from the left side. They rise up and then they flow out uh, the right side. Again, in terms of um, notation for classification, uh, we would write uh, the letter A underneath the print, either a lowercase if it's any finger other than the index, or an uppercase A if it is the index finger. Uh, 
and then we write two capital letter A's in the top right hand corner uh, to indicate that it was a plain arch. Again, there's no tracing, there's no ridge count for it, so that's how we do our notation. Here's another good example of a plain arch. If you paid attention earlier, I mentioned that one of the difficulties is with comparing plain arches is oftentimes they have a sincere or a severe rather lack of, of unique features. We can see that there are a lot of uh, ending ridges in this print, but there are not a lot of bifurcations or, or other dots or, or short ridges. Uh, there are some, but you can see how this might be kind of a difficult fingerprint to compare uh, versus a fingerprint that has a lot of recurves and bifurcations and other sorts of things. So, But this is also a good example of what is constituted as a plain arch. Now that's different from what we see here. This is a tented arch. Now remember, arches in general are fingerprints that flow in from one side, rise up in the middle, and flow out the other side. The main difference between a tented arch and a plain arch typically is the steepness with which that rise in the middle happens. Uh, so we can see on this particular tented arch that as the fingerprint ridges flow in from the left and rise up, there's this very sharp uh, rise in the middle. And we have this ridge which is shooting up here. We call this an upthrust. And so this upthrust within the ridge has caused these arches to tent upwards, kind of like you might see if you had, uh, let's say, an A-frame tent, hence the term uh, tented arch because it has a tendency to resemble what we call an A-frame tent. So it has this tented or A shape in the middle of the print. Um, in terms of uh, definition, a tented arch is that type of pattern which possesses either an angle in the middle of it, an upthrust in the middle of it, or two of the three basic characteristics of the loop. So earlier when we were talking about comparing or identifying loops, if you remember there are three essential requirements for a fingerprint to be classified as a loop, it must have a sufficient recurve, it must have a ridge count and a delta. Well, if we have a fingerprint that has two of those three characteristics, but not all three, uh, it can't be a loop. So by default, we characterize it as a tented arch. So for example, a fingerprint that has a delta uh, and maybe it has what would be a ridge count, but there's not a good sufficient recurve, so it has two of the three characteristics, it's a, it's a tented arch. So we really have three different varieties of tented arches. We have what are called angle-type tented arches, we have upthrust-type tented arches, and then we have loop-type tented arches. And we can see examples of those three here. For example, here in this fingerprint on the left, we have this upthrust here, which has caused this, this marked rise in our ridge flow. So this would be an example here on the left of an upthrust-type tented arch. In this fingerprint here, notice this ridge here, how we have this angle formation here. So this would be what we call an angle-type tended arch. And then here we have a loop-type tended arch. We have definitely a delta, so we have type lines and a delta. But we, have, we don't have a good sufficient recurve here, so it's missing one of the requirements of being a loop. So this is almost a loop, but since it's not quite a loop, we automatically classify it as a tended arch. In terms of our notation, underneath a fingerprint that is a tended arch, we would write uh, the letter T. If it's the index finger on the fingerprint card, we put a capital T. If it's any other finger, a thumb, a middle finger, a ring finger, a pinky finger, then we write a lowercase t. In the top right-hand corner, again, arches don't have ridge counts or tracings, um, so we're not putting a number or a, a tracing, an I, an O, or an M. So what we do in the top right-hand corner, whenever we have a tenant arch, is we put two capital T's in the top right-hand corner. Um, if it is a loop-type tenant arch, you might want to consider adding the ridge count, but that's not a requirement. So in terms of notation, that's how we notate tented arches. All right, so here are some examples of what you might see in the middle of a tented arch fingerprint that would make it a tented arch. Remember, there's three varieties, the angle type, the upthrust type, and the loop type tented arch. Here are examples of what you might see a formation that would be considered an angle formation inside of a, an arch, which would make these angle type uh, tenant arches, or you have what's called an upthrust, which is a single ridge which shoots up, uh, and, and it is uh, less than 90 degrees, and these are what we call upthrust type tenant arches. So you're going to see uh, both of these uh, in some, diff different types of arches. So here is an example of an angle type tenant arch. If you look at this fingerprint, we can see this angle formation here. So this makes this an angle type tenant arch. Again, we kind of have this sharp rise here in the middle as a result of this angle formation.
Here we have an example of an upthrust type tethered arch. So again, here's here we see there's several upthrusts here. Here's one, two, three, four. All these are upthrusts. So again, we see this very sharp rise in the middle as a result. So again, it looks kind of like the the A-frame tent setup. So again, this is a tethered arch, and it would be the upthrust type. In terms of your notation, you don't have to differentiate between the types. You do not need to write upthrust type or or angle type. You just write tented arch. Now, the loop type tented arch, as we mentioned, uh, loops have three essential elements. So for a fingerprint to be a loop, uh, it needs to have a sufficient recurve, a delta, and a ridge count. Any fingerprint that is has two of those but is missing the third is then going to automatically become a tented arch. So we call it a loop type tented arch. And uh, here are some examples of what you might see. Uh, for example, looking at this fingerprint here, Here's our type line and our type line, but there's no dot or ending ridge or whatever. So the delta is actually put on the innermost recurve. And since this is a good innermost recurve, if the delta is here, our core is going to be here. So if we were to draw an imaginary line between the two, remember you don't include the delta or the core. And so this fingerprint has no ridge count. So it's missing the ridge count portion. So that's why this would be considered a tented arch. This fingerprint here, we have our type line and our type line and our delta. Um, the problem, though, is we have a, a spoiled recurve, so we don't have a good sufficient recurve there, so we're not going to be able to classify that as a loop. Uh, here's another example. Here is our delta. I'm sorry, our type lines. Here's our delta. Here's our, here's our innermost recurve. It is a good recurve. The problem, though, is if we put our delta there on the opposite shoulder, we have no ridge count. So again, we do not have uh, a loop because it's missing one of those requirements. Um, so again, if we have any sort of fingerprint where two of the three essential characteristics are present but not that third, again, we have to have all three to consider it a loop. So it can't be considered a loop, so it must be considered a tented arch. And so again, uh, we have the loop type tented arch. So here's an example of a loop type tented arch. So looking at this fingerprint, uh, we have some type lines and we have a delta. Uh, but we see here there's really only one uh, recurving ridge. And the problem, though, is this recurving ridge is spoiled because of this appendage right here. So we, we do have what would have been a ridge count because we do have a delta, but we don't have a sufficient recurve. And so uh, this particular fingerprint is going to be a tenant arch. And notice it's designated with the TT. Because it would have had a, a, a ridge count, the, the ridge count is put in there, um, but it's not necessary. You could just write the TT there because it is simply a tented arch. Uh, in terms of annotations, you can kind of see how we annotate uh, our fingerprint cards when we do our classification. Uh, some of these we've seen before, so we can see that fingerprint number one is a whirl. We can see it's a plain whirl with an outer tracing. Fingerprint number one, uh, number two rather, the right index finger, we can see it's an ulnar loop, so it's a right slanting ulnar loop. So on the right finger, we can see it has a ridge count of 21. All right, here we see that the middle finger, finger number three, we can see that it has these rises in the middle. We can see that it's a plain arch, so it's designated with a, an A. Since it's not the index finger, it's a lowercase a. In the top right-hand corner, it's designated with two capital letters. Here we can see an ulnar loop with a ridge count of 22, another ulnar loop with a ridge count of 9. Going down here, we have a whirl. happens to be a plain whirl with an outer tracing. Uh, looking at our index finger, this is a radial loop, because we can see that it loops towards the thumb rather than towards the pinky. Uh, it's designated with a capital R because we use capital letters when it's the index finger. And it has a ridge count of 6, but because it's a radial loop, we write it as 56. Here's an ulnar loop, ridge count of 9. Here's a whirl. It's a double loop whirl with a meeting tracing. Here is an a ulnar loop with a ridge count of 4. So in, again, in terms of arches, we put the letter A or the letter T, depending upon if it's a plain arch. Letter A if it's a plain arch. Letter T if it's a tenet arch and then either AA or TT in the top right-hand corner. Here's another example of a fingerprint, uh, whirl. So it's a double loop whirl with an outer tracing. Here's a fingerprint. Notice it has a T question mark slash. What that's saying is it's really close to either being a ulnar loop or a tented arch. And so what it might be here is whether there might be some examiners that might uh, depending upon where you put the delta, because sometimes there's a question as to where the delta should go, or where the person put the core as to whether or not it has a ridge count or not. So what they're saying here is basically you could call this either a tented arch or an ulnar loop.
and it does have a ridge count of one. If it's a tenant arch, you'd put a TT up here. If it's an ulnar loop, you'd put a ridge count of one. Here we see down here, definitely, and by the way, notice this, this is the index finger, we put a capital T instead of a lowercase t. Notice this tenant arch here, which is the left ring finger, it's a tenant arch, so it has a lowercase t, but there's a capital TT in the top. So, and notice, by the way, it doesn't indicate what type of tenant arch this is. There's no way to, it doesn't indicate for sure if it's an up thrust or angle type uh, or a loop type tenant arch. So anyway, that's how you do your notation when you have arches.